What is up guys, I hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering r slash I do work here lady. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe, that like button, and maybe that notification bell. And with that being said, let's get started. Our first story is from Functeon. I can't say the rest of the name. Yes sir, I'm working in your yard. You have an appointment. I'm a service technician for the gas company. I'm also the only female service technician for the gas company. This leads to confusion on a daily basis. So, I arrived to a 9 to 12 appointment the other day at 9.05 a.m. Super simple job, exchange a gas meter, inspect gas equipment in the house, relight equipment, then be on my way to the next call. We get 30 minutes allotted for each job like this, but dispatch understands that this doesn't always work. Sometimes it takes 15 minutes if the old meter was installed well and the gas equipment is all new, but sometimes it takes 3 hours if I have to rebuild their whole service and coax on an old boiler back to life. I grab my tools out of the truck, grab a new meter and head to the front door. The call says, hazard, dog. So I figure it's best to check in with the customer before I head into the yard. I knock and ring the doorbell, no answer. So I pull the customer's number off the call and give him a ring. I say, good morning, this is Functeon from the gas company. You have a meter exchange appointment booked for this morning. Is anyone at home? The customer says, not at the moment. Is the tech there already? Yes sir, I'm at the address. Will you be home soon? Yes, tell the tech to wait, I'll be home in 15 minutes. I say, okay, I'll wait for you. Can I start working in the yard or is your dog outside? But the customer just hangs up, so I decide to wait. Anyway, it's minus 28 Celsius, minus 40 with a wind chill. I'm bundled up, but I'm going to be outside all day. So I decide to wait in the truck to preserve my warmth. I drop my tools and a new meter off at the gate to the yard and sit in my truck until the customer pulls into the driveway. When the customer arrives, I immediately get out of my truck and jog over to the house. The customer says, so I spoke with someone in the office and they said the tech was already here. Where is he? I have to get back to work soon. I can't wait here all morning. I am the tech, sir. And that was me you spoke with. If you're all good, I'll get that meter changed out for you. Then get your furnace and water heater going. The customer says, well, if you say so, but if that's the case, where are your tools? To which I say, over by the gate. I left them there so they'll be ready to go when you got here. Um, okay. Say, how long have you been doing this? This specifically, a little over a year. Working in the industry, almost nine years. Okay, go ahead. You don't have anyone coming to help you? No sir, this is a very simple job. I should have it done in 15 to 20 minutes or so. And the course said you have a dangerous dog. Is it contained? He's a 12 year old beagle, you're fine. I don't know why anyone thought he was dangerous. So I could have started almost three quarters of an hour ago at this point, and my next two calls were in jeopardy because of how long I'd been here at this point. So I get to work, and sure enough, his meter set is in pretty rough shape. I pull the meter off with some difficulty and my largest wrenches and start cranking some of the bad fittings out so I can rebuild part of the set to make this job easier the next time we have to change the meter and generally safer. He was leaning over my shoulder the whole time, continued asking if I was sure I know what I'm doing, if I really don't need to call for help. I got my fitting down and went inside. Sure enough, the gas equipment was all high efficiency, so it all took a couple of resets to clear out the air bubbles and it all fired up perfectly. The call took about an hour once I actually had my tools on, which was a little longer than anticipated, but a very good time frame for the work I wound up having to do to leave the place in a safe condition. A very good time frame, mind you, for any tech who have had that call. As I was gathering my things to go, he got one last jab in. You know, I'd really appreciate if they would actually send a real tech next time. I don't feel comfortable for having one of the office girls doing this kind of work for me. I'm going to have a word with the gas company and tell them as much. I said, sir, for the last time, I am a qualified service technician. The next customer was a very sweet old lady who met me at the door and immediately presented me with muffins. They told me you were coming even though it should be illegal to work in this temperature. I made muffins, take them, you deserve it. They really shouldn't be making you work in this. <laughs> and what a lovely end. Sweet old ladies are the best. But holy shit, what is that guy's problem? They should put a note on like your system to always make sure you go to his house from now on. <laughs> this story is from I like bread, he he. <laughs> Mom, I am the manager. Note, this story is in fact not mine but my sister's. She's 32 now and I chuckle a bit every time she talks about it. I'm just gonna say it in first person. Also, she gave me permission to post this. Background, I was 29 at the time when I became a manager of a small retail store in a small town, so therefore we didn't have any incidents with outrageous customers. I personally liked this because my self-esteem was very low and honestly, I just didn't like talking to people. 
I walk into a store with a couple of customers already looking at items on the shelves, along with one of the employees smiling and waving at me. I smile and wave back, and look through the door into the break room. I didn't have breakfast that morning, so I grab a muffin and start eating it so I can check up on everything. I'd recently just started the position as a manager, so I wanted to try and be somewhat efficient. A couple of minutes later, the employee walks in. Nice employee says, hey, there's a lady out there with her kid. She's asking to see the manager. She also says that she knows you very well. Me, not knowing what to do. Oh, um, okay. I walked outside and introduced myself. Hello, I'm the manager, what do you need? Karen scoffed. You are not the manager, I knew him. Get me the real manager. I'm confused. Uh, Mum, I am in fact the manager. I don't know who else you could be talking about. And then it hit me. She must be talking about the old manager. Oh, do you mean old manager? Karen says, yes, I mean old manager. Why is this so difficult for you? Mum, he doesn't work here anymore. If you continue to yell, we'll have to make you leave. Mind you, the girl hadn't said a word so far. She just kept looking down embarrassed. The kid says, mum, come on, just pay for our stuff and go home. No, I will see your manager. Mum, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. She eventually just kept yelling and rambling about how we can't just lie saying that I'm the manager and that we should be fired. The kid says, mum, let's go. This is why dad keeps getting mad at you. Karen looked down at her and smacked her. Nice employee ran around the desk and grabbed the child's hand and sat the kid down while called security. Karen went nuts on security and we called the police. I heard that Karen had to go to court because she ended up assaulting one of the police officers as well. Even after I heard about everything going on with Karen, I never heard what happened with the kid. I felt bad. Along with that, I never found out what the lady needed in the first place. I never asked a nice employee because she gave me two weeks notice a couple days later. On her last day, I wished her well and never saw her again. That's like, <laughs> that's got like entitled parents in with it as well. I like I like a mixed story like that. But holy crap, hitting your kid. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm totally against hitting kids. I'm like, so, I know some people are all for it and things and it teaches them some respect, but I'm just so against it, it's unreal. Our next story is from Rainbow Llama Potato. Where'd you get these names from, man? <laughs> Uh, to be fair, I used to be called Daddy Cringe, so... <laughs> okay, I'm not good at making titles, sorry, but I recently found this subreddit and it made me think of this. A little backstory, I am 15 and at the time was looking for a job. My mum works at a thrift store and she was seven months pregnant. Okay, but anyway, I went to my mum's work with her because it was Saturday and my mum wanted to show me around the thrift shop she owned, and still owns. This is about two years ago and I was a little naive at the time, so my mum was showing me around, you know the storeroom, the break room, all that stuff. So the first customers came in and I watched her help them. And I watched her help a few more customers. She was working up front because most of the employees didn't show up for another few hours and the others were on the break or something. Then a girl who, yes, had a Karen hairstyle, walked in holding her kid's hand. This is how the conversation went. I'm just gonna call her Karen. Karen said, hello mom, I'd like to look at the scarves. My mum said, we don't have any on the shelves right now, but I could bring some from the back for you to look at. Karen took a look at my mum and said, Can I get a real employee, please? Like that girl sitting behind you. Sorry, mum, she's just watching me work. And I'm the only person working right now. I'd be glad to help you. Stop lying. Pregnant women don't go to work. They stay at home. I must have chuckled because Karen glared at me and said, Sweetie, you in the chair. Come help me get a scarf and call the real manager. Mum, I'm just her daughter watching her work so I can try it out myself. She is the manager. Karen looked at me shocked as one of the employees walked in from break. Karen said, I'm calling the police. Employee said, Mom, what's going on here? These two fake employees are telling me they're out of scarves and being rude. She says she's the manager. The employee laughed and said, Mom, that is my boss. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Karen's face turned red as she stormed out of the shop. Her kid looked embarrassed for a five-year-old. I don't know, this might have been an entitled parent. I haven't been on Reddit that long. Also, forgive me if I have bad grammar. English isn't my first language, and I have bad grammar and use of words sometimes. Wow. <laughs> Pregnant women don't go to work. That's a new one on me. <laughs> Our final story is from Hathosis. Yes, I didn't used to work here. Now I do work here. Disclaimer, this is a minor incident which I still find funny. No one got fired and no divine retribution was had, just a long history of working for two different companies in the same building. 
Back in the summers of 2004 and 2005, I did some part-time helper work for a land surveying company that rented half a building from a fire alarm company. They were not using the whole building and our CAD engineers needed some cubicles and an office for our plans printer. I met some interesting people and got my first exposure to construction site safety wisdom that has stuck with me over the years. There were some good days and bad days, but I came more responsible from working two summers there between school semesters. The main reason I got the job was that my father worked with a fire alarm company that shared the same building and put in a good word for me to help get a summer job. Because my dad's office was on the side of the building, I would occasionally venture past the invisible barrier to see him before heading home after work. I still lived at home at the time, so if our schedules aligned, we drove together. Though, I had weird overtime hours, so that didn't happen often. After a few times of being redirected back to the land surveyor side of the building, the office knew who I was and didn't mind me. Fast forward a few years and I was looking for another full time job. I averaged about 3-4 to four years with the company and I was looking for work. It just so happens I had some experience in building fire alarm panels in the back of the shop. By this time land surveyors and the fire alarm company had both grown too big to share the same building. So they got their own shop further in town and the fire alarm company spread out over the building. They were now big enough to fill. The hiring manager was different from the time I had been with my land surveying company but about three quarters of the rest of the office still remember me from back working for the other company. Yes, my dad helped me get my foot in the door, but I got the job on my own merit. And after going through training and going to the back of the shop to assemble the fire alarm panels, huge industrial cabinets that's more efficient to just build in house as opposed to in the field, I started to get odd looks from engineers who remember me from years before. One dude told me that just because my dad worked in the office down the hall doesn't mean I should be messing with company property. I was marched into my dad's office as an engineer told him what he caught me doing. We were both a bit confused. My dad wasn't a company owner or even a manager, he was just the accountant. So he pointed across the hall to where my manager's office was and said, so talk to the manager about it. The engineer was a bit confused but took me down to the manager who confirmed I did work there. She was a bit confused as to why this engineer would think I didn't work there just because I was new. It was fun to explain how I'd been wandering the halls as a non-employee for so long to see my dad at work and that now I actually worked here, it might cause a bit of confusion. I ended up breaking my continuous work record and staying there for 6 years before the company was brought by a larger company. But it was a funny story of how I was mistaken for not working there for a semi-legitimate reason. I still didn't understand why though someone would basically collar you and take you to the office and say this guy doesn't work here, what's he doing? <laughs> like other people in the place hasn't noticed that, it's like what the hell? Oh god. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories. We haven't covered this subreddit before, so let me know if you did, and we can maybe get some more in at some point down in the future. As you probably noticed, there's no schedule to this channel as yet. We're just testing subreddits, randomizing it up a bit. So I know I know some of you really enjoy having like different subreddits, so yeah. <laughs> Anyway guys, if you did enjoy these stories, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell. And I will see you in the next one. Much love guys.